owl is an animal that's covered in scales, so they don't have fur and feathers, but they have scales, and that can be scales like a snake, it can be like uh, scoops on a turtle, or, or like almost armor plated like a crocodile. And also, the way they uh, regulate their body temperature is very unique to reptiles, whereas mammals are warm blooded or endothermic, a reptile is ectothermic or in basic terms they call it cold-blooded, but it doesn't mean that their blood is cold, it just means that they have to use an external source, such as the sun, to heat their bodies up to power themselves. So you will not find a reptile in Antarctica, whereas you do find mammals, and the colder regions of the world, there are far fewer reptiles, so that the more warmer you get, the more reptiles you find, and that's because of the way their body functions. You find reptiles in the desert, in the sea, in the jungle, grasslands anywhere. Many lizards you'll see basking in the sun to charge themselves as it were. Some reptiles don't need to do that. They might gain heat from the ground. So when an area has been heated up, they'll sit in that area to gain the warmth maybe from below. So a snake might gain the heat from, from the soil or earth. The heat is so important to be able to regulate their body. So to be able to get moving, a reptile is only active when it's warm enough and to be able to digest its food it also needs heat. So again if a reptile has been warm, able to eat, it also needs the warmth to be able to digest that food item properly. Otherwise, they will sit again in a torpor and that food will just go nasty inside of them. So again, they need it to digest. They also need it for reproducing. They need to know when is the best time to lay the eggs, when is the best time to incubate the eggs in the ground or the temperature is right, and when is the best time for the babies to be born or hatched. A, a cool reptile will just be very slow, inactive and dormant. And then gradually it will get slower and slower to the point of they, they will go into a sleep. If a reptile wants to avoid a cold period, generally they, they hibernate, they go underground. To offer that heat, obviously coming from England, our climate is very cold a lot of the time, particularly in the winter, so we need to really make sure that our enclosures stay warm so we can insulate them from the walls. And then inside we always provide some sort of heat source, whether it's a lamp, so we can use a hot lamp to provide to, to replicate the sun, or whether if it's not the heat lamp, we can use a, a panel heater, like another radiator type heater that can radiate the heat into the enclosure. So they go under the, the hot light or the sun in the wild to gain heat. But as a subproduct, they also get um, ultraviolet light, which offers them vitamin D3, which is very important for uh, bone growth. It is the vitamin they need to absorb calcium efficiently, so they can grow their bones, or in a tortoise's case, it's shell. All of those are very important. So we've got four levels of it, uh, ranging from sort of a shaded area to a bright, sunny area. So we try and look at natural history. Where do they come from? List that down and then look at the animal's behavior, how does it heat its body, and then in some instances we've got wild data where we use a device to measure the UV light, and that will give us a number that we can try and replicate in the uh, enclosures here at the zoo, so we try and, and make sure that they get the right amount of UV light. We've worked very closely with Komodo dragons to try and uh, improve the way we offer heat, uh, Komodo dragons come from Indonesia, it's a very high climate and it, it can be very hot, they have a seasonal climate but it, it, in the dry season it's very hot indeed and they, they do come from a place where it's really hot. So to copy that in a British zoo is, is quite tricky. Um, initially we wanted to offer them a bank of, of spotlights so we can have um, high powered bulbs and we can have these a few in a row to uh, provide high UV, which is what they offer, because we can check with the meters, and also heat the reptile very well. And these were always very popular in heating reptiles. The thing with the Komodo dragon, which makes it very unique, is they're very, very large. They're three meters long, 80 to 100 kilos, potentially. And that is a large surface area. So we've had to come up with a new way to be able to heat a large-bodied reptile. And the new way is to use a, a larger heat source. So we, we've started sourcing panel heaters. So we can have that, a large one, any size and in high wattage, above the reptile. And that's giving it a lot of heat. So the heat is pouring onto it now. Obviously with a heat panel heater, you don't get UV light. So then we had to come up with another uh, piece of equipment, which is a bank of strip lights. So these lights are long tubes, and they provide minimal heat, but they specifically provide very high UV. So when we have the heat panel and the, and the bank of, of 
uh, tube lights together pointing towards your animal's basking spot, you're then offering high heat, great UV, and very widespread as well, so it's covering a huge surface area to, to cope with such a large reptile. So now the Komodo dragons have those from looking at images on our thermo cameras that it's doing a much better job of heating up the dragons and also giving them ultraviolet light as well. If you've got a passion for something, really explore it and get excited by it and look at different ways you can get into it. Read lots of books, watch any TV shows about reptiles, anything. When I, I was anything reptile related, I was, I was in and I was learning. And already at a very young age, because you have a sort of capacity to pick things up and learn things, things just stick in your head. And I remember things just sticking in my head and by the time I was, you know, at oldest uh, high school, I already knew quite a lot about reptiles, so I was able to build on that. But um, obviously you've still got to be very focused in school, so, so looking at uh, trying to do well in all your subjects, because that will go on to, um, to, to put you in good stead at later education. But um, I think the most important subject is the one that you're most passionate about.